Sandy, 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 good evening. Can you hear me okay? Of course I can, yes. I can see you oh. fine and I can hear you fine. Fantastic. The technology is working and we have a wonderful crowd in for this, well, a special evening um, which we've put together for our Spirit of Speyside Whiskey Festival attendees who couldn't unfortunately come this year. I know. It's such a shame. I mean, it's, it's a great time of year up here in Speyside. It's a time when we obviously open the doors here at Tam Do, welcome lots of friends, new and old, and uh, it's a great disappointment to us have that opportunity this year, but hopefully some of them have been able to join us tonight, and we can spend some time together. Exactly. So, um, you know, really what we're going to do, or you're going to do most of the work tonight, because you're at the oh, distillery, <laughs> but uh, we're going to take people through, obviously, a tour, um, but also just a, a tour around the site and some of the things that interest you. So tell us, Sandy, where are you now? Well, tonight I'm on the, the tranquil banks of the Nakando Burn. And this is the area where Tam Do Distillery actually draws its cooling water for our condensers from. And it's a, an area I'm particularly proud of from an environmental perspective and sustainability perspective, Gordon. Yeah. Um, where we had to install a fish pass to allow migrating salmon back up this, this burn, uh, a tributary of the River Spey, which hasn't been, been used for migratory fish further upstream for about 120 years. So right. A, a fantastic piece of work that was done oh, look at that. in conjunction with uh, a lot of partners. We, we worked with SEPA, we worked with the, the, the Nakando Estate, we worked with Spay Fisheries and some local contractors to install what is one of the longest fish passes in the UK. Um, so it's, it's actually quite unique in itself. There you go. I was just standing here waiting for you dialing in. We actually, I noticed that the camera, we have a, a camera down in this top box here. You maybe just see the lights flickering away in it. Oh, yeah. We, are, we actually count any fish that are going up this, this burn and uh, breeding. And hopefully, um, we'll hopefully maybe someday in the future be able to live stream that onto our Tamdu website. That's fantastic. Well, there you go. So, I mean, that's something which, um, you know, shows us that, you know, as a whiskey distillery, you've got to, you've got to look after everything, haven't you, as much of the environment oh, around us? Very much so. We, we, we rely so much on all the natural resources. We've got this fantastic countryside round about us and the, the River Spey. You know, why not look after it for future gen generations, if, if nothing else, uh, except for this whole sustainability piece as well. Absolutely. I'm well, going to leave here, um, and I'm okay. going to head round to where our guests would have been joining us. Okay, uh, so that's great. I may well, very well need you to, to sort of fill in for I, me a wee bit here. I, not a problem. I can do that. I can do that. And you can maybe give a wee sort of commentary where it is I am. Yeah, I will do that. Absolutely. So Sandy, Sandy's leaving pretty much, if you were to drive into Tamdu, he's currently opposite the entrance to Tamdu. He's now going to head down to the banks of the Spey on his, um, well, what are you what are you getting on there, Sandy? What's this little bit of kit you've got? Oh, very nice. Right, this is a bit of a funny evening for me as well, to be quite honest with you. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. Um, it's something that we, we haven't done before is using the quad for any tours or anything like that. Yeah. So let's see how we go on with it. I'm so Just, hoping it's not too noisy for you. Yeah. Um, well, I'll try and talk to it while you're point. driving. So, we're, yeah, we're going to go from where Sandy is. We're actually going to go down to the, down to the banks of the River Spey. We're going to go to the Dalby Alley. So hopefully it's not too noisy. We're getting the full experience, everybody. So we're going to turn. We're going to turn left here. That's the entrance to the distillery. There, we're going to turn hard left. I think down here. Um, that's us. We're going over the additional warehouse up there on the left. Um, we're going straight down to the Dalvin Point, down by the bank. So what's great about Tamu is it says it's a Speyside whiskey, and it is actually genuinely by the Spey, which is fantastic. So. Um, this is the Dalby Alley station that you can all see in front of you. And this is where you would have been coming um, as the entry point to your tour, which would have been, well, today is Thursday. It would have been tomorrow and Saturday for you guys, anybody who is coming to the Spirit of Space I was So we wanted to show you the Dalby Alley station. Obviously, this is the inspiration of the Dalby Alley Dram, which we released at the Spirit of Space Ride Festival. And I think Sandy's arrived in one of his favourite spots in the whole of Scotland. 
Yeah, this this is just so picturesque. It's, I don't know. Can you still hear me? I'm just on the wee I, mic on my. I can absolutely hear me you. fine. Great stuff. I'm pleased yeah. that's that's worked in. So yeah, I'm I'm on one of the platforms at the railway station right now. Obviously, the Victorian railway station behind me, um, the old signal box, etc. And this is where the Speyside uh, railway line used to be, and it's now yeah. a long distance walk called the Speyside Way. But what ah. we've done is we've installed an old uh, washback from the distillery here, and turned it into a wee bit of a picnic bench. Oh, and it's just got the most phenomenal yeah. view. If nothing else, it's got a wee bottle of Tam Do there to get me started for the evening. Well, so well, I'm well, going well. to have a wee sample of that. So I'm just going to put well. you down for a wee sec here. Yeah. Let you take that in. And then I'll get oh, myself up nice. nice. Sandy's just pouring himself a whiskey. This is, this is genuinely live. Um, I mean, I think what the key thing about this station is that it's, a, it's the reason why Tam Do is where it is. Um, a real way of getting our casks in and our product out to market in... Oh, my Lord. Interesting. Strong look, Sandy. Strong look. Well, it, it, they say it puts hairs in your chest, Gordon. Right, OK. <laughs> in my case, it puts hairs on the top of my head. So yeah. would I be correct in saying, Sandy, you have the Dalby Alley Dram number two in front of you? I have, yes. This is what was released last year during our Whiskey Festival event. Cheers, Slanger. Cheers, Slanger. Um, and it's, the, it's named in commemoration of the railway station here. I'm going to take this back off because it just gets a bit awkward. It's just a bit there for a bit. <laughs> um, but yes, uh, Dalby Alley, named in, in commemoration of the railway station where we are right now. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic and program. A limited release, non aged whiskey, Gordon. Yeah, no, it, absolutely. 61.1% alcohol, this whiskey. So really high cast strength. But my God, you are not reaching for the water when you, when you go for this whiskey. It's it, big flavours. Yeah, it's a wee bit of a beast, isn't it? I mean, that, that high strength. People, yeah. A lot of people think, yeah, a couple of things there. One, it must be a relatively young whiskey, not necessarily the case. And secondly, just rightly as you said there, that perhaps it maybe needs that wee bit of water just to take it down a wee bit or two. But uh, absolutely, yeah. It doesn't. It's not a harsh whiskey at all. I'm going to have a wee, a wee nose. I mean, there we've got... Oh, lovely and rounded. Yeah. Oh, it's gorgeous. Yeah. Slange really, I'm really good. good. I'm going to my first one, but. So that's the Dalby Alley 2, which we released at the Spirit of Speyside Whiskey Festival last year. Um, and uh, an absolutely wonderful whiskey. And, and we'll talk a little bit later about another whiskey that we released pretty close to that time, Sandy, which I know is quite close to your heart. Um, Very much but we'll, yeah. but I, I was talking about the significance of the railway in relation to why the distillery is where it is in terms of cask coming in and, and fit filled cask going out to market. Exactly that. I mean, this whole railway line, for the importance of it for the whole of Speyside, not just Tamdu, it was absolutely critical back in the day. The railway line opened up way back in the 1890s, um, and mm. it was crucial in bringing fresh casks to us here at the distilleries and the other distilleries in Speyside, but also obviously taking away that mature spirit back down to bottling halls to be spread right around the world. So absolutely critical um, as to hmm. the whole importance of it. And yes, first delivery of casks way back in 1898 here at Tamdu, Sherry Butts. So we are oh, very much beautiful. to our roots. Yeah, for those of you who have been coming on the tour, that's very much one of the, the stories that we love to tell people. Yeah, it's and absolutely. And, and, and after the tour, everybody could have sat there, looked at the spay, enjoyed their wonderful, the view, their wonderful whiskey, I mean, it genuinely is one of the most amazing spots in whiskey. Such a beautiful location. Quite, quite interesting. We actually, at the weekend, uh, there was two poachers here. So the importance of the spay, even at this time, in terms of the salmon on it, poachers are still willing to come up to the spay and chance actually catching a salmon at the moment. Yeah, it would be a bit unusual, so be a bit disappointing with that. And then one of the other things that I found out just recently, and we actually have some of them here now, is we have some Dalby Alley daffodils. Now, there's mm -hmm. a thing you can do. Um, it's something that uh, we, we planted up some, some new uh, daffodils and uh, flowering spring bulbs, etc. here at Tamdu, and we decided to plant some of the Dalby Alley ones. So there you are, something Fantastic. that... Fantastic. If you're a real fan of Tamdu, look out for them somewhere. Absolutely. Very uh, good. As we speak, so I'm going to so, jump back on the quad. If you okay. Like, and let's get along to the distillery. Get along to the distillery. So you, you concentrate on driving. I will, I will tell everybody what they can expect on their distillery tour. Okay, fine. Thank you very much, Gordon. We'll see you Okay. Later. So, as Sandy gets back on his quad bike, um, having only had a sip of whiskey, of course, uh, 
Um, we, he's going to drive up what is effectively the space side way, and he's going to drive up to the distillery from there. He might go the other way. Actually, I'm not sure. Which way he's going to go. No, I'm going to go. I'm actually going to go the along the way that we normally go, Gordon. All right. Okay. So, so we're driving along the space side way, heading up. So the distillery is directly in front of us. There's the the, uh, the junction box, not the junction box, the signal box. Uh, junction box is something completely different. Uh, we're going to head up to the distillery, which is up here on the right hand side. Um, and what Stanley's going to do is he's going to take us through all parts of. So we'll start in the mill, um, and then we're going to move into mashing. Uh, we're going to move then into fermentation. We'll have a look at distillation. He'll talk about some whiskies as we're going through that, and then we're going to move into the filling store at the end. And we'll talk about some other things which you can get involved with. So, Gordon, Sandy, what are we I'm, looking I'm at I'm sure you now? can maybe still hear me at the moment, but uh, I'm just stopping just for a wee fraction of a second. Um, it's, it's one of the, the things that people don't necessarily know an awful lot about Tamdu. It's actually quite an extensive site that we've got here. Mm. And uh, in the last, well, just actually over a year ago, we opened our own cooperage here at the site as well. So we actually have our own cooper. It's a wee bit unusual, perhaps, in, in some of the distilleries these days. Pretty rare I don't these know days. whether you can see it in the distance here, just over in the, on the left-hand side there, is our cooperage. And uh, we, we are cooper there. Sean um, is responsible for testing and repairing any casks we have. Busy chap, actually, because it's uh, quite a busy wee site with, with actually oh, emptying and disgorging whiskey. Well, I mean, we've, you know, you know we've, we've done a lot on our sherry cask from our Spain to Space site sort of uh, campaign, explaining everybody about our sherry cask. They're expensive sherry casks, and I think the key thing is we need to have a good cooper who understands how important these are. And Sean, I've seen him at work, absolutely fantastic at what he does, which is great. Yeah, I mean, one of the things we had the great privilege of doing last year uh, was taking most of the team here from Tamdu out to Jerez, where we get our casks from, yeah, and spending right. some time at the cooperages and uh, getting to see... The, the importance of the, the casks in the, the whole natural environment of the, the Sherry Triangle and building those relationships that we have with fantastic exactly. relationships yeah. with the suppliers that we have. So Absolutely. I'm going to head into the distillery just now, um, okay. just at the back door. So very much, again, uh, for those of you who have maybe been around Tamdu before, um, things haven't changed an awful lot in the last 12 to 18 months. A few, few wee improvements, one of which is actually just right behind me here. I don't know whether you can see it, we've installed a new draft hopper in October. Yeah. Um, our draft hopper was getting to the stage where it was uh, well, quite rusty and, and perhaps... I remember the old one, it. yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was, it, it was painted green. I mean, it wasn't maybe quite so much like the space rocket we've got now, but uh, it certainly made a change to the site. One of the improvements, it's a wee bit bigger than the one we had before, so again, just gives us that wee bit of extra operational advantages as well in terms of holding some draft for a wee bit longer if necessary. And then Fantastic. at the back here, we've got our malt silos. Uh, at the moment, they're sitting empty. The, the distillery is closed. We have our team coming back to, to work tomorrow. We've, we've just come out of silent season. And they uh, were due to start mashing. Uh, um, a week on Tuesday, as we, a week on Wednesday, I should say. The 13th, we start mashing again. Excellent. So at the moment, malt silos sitting empty. Um, but we'll start those deliveries again on Monday, the 11th of May. And we're using malted barley from Simpsons. Uh, we're on a variety at the moment called Laureate, which is one of the, the newer varieties that there is kicking about. Uh, and typically at Tamdu here, we go through somewhere about uh, 190 tonnes per week, or just, just slightly less than that when we're on full production, which is where we'll be starting. Quite a lot that. of malt, isn't it? Oh, it is, yeah. yes. It's, it's, it's certainly, you know, for us, the most expensive raw material and most expensive um, uh, element in terms of spend per month here at the site as well. So uh, very, very important. We build, again, great relationships with our suppliers. Uh, and we're checking that quality all the time. And you know that malt that we have, Gordon, is very, very, very lightly peated. So it's exceptionally lightly peated. Yeah. Not to the point you would ever call Tam do a peated whiskey there. No, 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 not at all. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. But I mean, yeah, it is, and it always has been, which is why we do it. So yeah, yeah. And then at yeah. the back here, we've got our boiler house and then our, our, our pot eel to tank out here as well. Uh, pot eel, obviously, the remnant from the first stage of the distillation process. Yeah. But let's yeah. go in and have a wee wander about. Okay, great. This is it, Sandy. Always unusual, though, stepping into a distillery that's quiet and silent. It's quite mm. eerie. It's, um, I guess it's, it's even lacking the smells as well. Well, the temperatures, the smells, the noise, you know, all that normal hustle and bustle that you get um, just with a, a kind of a living production process, basically, um, isn't on the go right now. And it's a wee bit dark down here. I hope the, it picks up a, a wee bit the, the light again. I haven't put the lights on down the stairs, actually. 
So, uh, so Sandy, got we've got fifty. We've got about oh, well over fifty people in. So we, we oh, wow. you know, the, well, of, of the of the people who are coming to Spirit of Space Side, which is great. Um, from Finland, from Holland, um, yeah, I think the from States, Germany, uh, Austin, well. Texas, Japan, Edinburgh, all Germany, everywhere, um, everywhere. Um, so. so they're waiting on bated breath for you to talk us through the first part of making Tam do. So away you go. Fantastic. Okay. Well, I'm here. You can you can hear the echo of the, the mill room here now at Tam do. So I'm standing beside our four roller Porteous mill. Hopefully it's not too dark. Hopefully you can maybe see that there. Um, for those of you again who have been around a, a range of different distilleries, perhaps a wee bit unusual. Normally the, the types of mills you get, most distilleries, certainly the older sites, tend to be Porteous or Bobby. Um, sometimes there's some of the more modern mills coming in now as well. Um, but this mill dates back to 1967. It was somewhere before it was at Tamdu. It came to Tamdu in 1972. So I don't really know where it was in those three years. Uh, we have tried to do a wee kind of checking up to try and find out, but we haven't actually managed to get anywhere with that. But perhaps unusual in that, if you've seen Porteous mills before, this one's green. And very much it falls into the same category as the rest of this room that we're in. Everything in here has been painted green for whatever reason. I really don't know. But other unusual things about it, though, another couple of quirks. Uh, one is that the top set of rollers here. So what we've got is we've got two rollers in at this top section and then two down below. And those rollers grind up the, the, the malted barley and get it into what we call grist. So this uh, material that's made up of husks, and I'll show you some in a minute, husks, grits, and flour, which is us getting the, the malted barley into a condition that allows us to extract the sugars from it. But the top set of rollers in this mill happen to have lines or grooves scored into them. So they're, they're what we call fluted. And it was probably done as a trial sometime years and years and years and years ago. Um, and it's not something that I've come across at any other distilleries I've worked at. And also the, the, the contractor who comes in to service this bit of kit, again, hasn't seen it in, in many other Porteous mills at all. So whether it was set up as a trial and found to be, well, it's not really making any difference, but allegedly it was there to aid that shear effect, that smashing open of the husks to get into those sugars inside the, 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 the corn itself. I, um, I, yeah, I, think, I think what people forget, and, and just to highlight, and you, this is a crucial part of it because you get your grind wrong. The next yes. stage all goes wrong, isn't it? Very much so. Like, like a lot of, like, let's face it, it's like a painter. Uh, it's like a joiner doing those three or four measurements, making sure the measurement's right before you cut the piece of wood. It's like a painter doing all that preparation work to the woodwork, to the walls, etc., before he's put that coat of paint on it. If you mm. get it right at the start, then you know what, the rest of that process will, will pretty much fall into line every single time. So yes, you're bang on, Gordon. Getting it right in the milling stage makes the rest of the job of the extraction of the sugars much, much easier, makes the drainage in the mash tun much easier, and actually makes us much more efficient as well. So yeah. bang on, you know, sum it up. You're, you're absolutely crucial there and, and uh, correct in saying, oh, I don't have a sample of grist. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, oh. I didn't check this earlier on today. Um, we normally, again, take a sample from every single grind, and it would normally go into this wee tray down here. It's a sample tray. Uh, obviously, we've been silent. Uh, the guys have been doing, I'm going to say, some tidying up. The place is, is still a wee bit untidy. Um, but uh, there would normally be a sample of gr grist there. I might have some in this wee box here. Let me have a wee look. Sometimes we, we keep a wee secret stash. To be safe. Oh, yes, I do. Look at that. Normally, what would happen is, every time we do a grind, we take a sample of that and assess it and measure what the ratios of the husk, grits, and flour are. And what we're looking for is somewhere about 20% husks, 70% grits, and 10% flour. And what we usually do is we would stick a sample in this machine here, uh, some, some of the grits at the top. It's a shaker, effectively, and it separates out all the different fractions, and then we can work out what the proportions are of that. Yeah. And this fancy bit of kit has replaced what, what we used to call the Shugley box. And I'm going to let you know if we look at this here. <laughs> We've got, and, and, and for the people in America, um, Greece, Japan, etc., Shugley means shaky. It's a, Scotty, a good Scottish word. It means to shake. To shugle is to shake. And what we would normally do is, again, put a portion of grist in the top, shake this wooden box, and what we've got is a series of sieves in here. And we've got different sieve sizes that separate out the husk, the grits, yeah. and then the flour. 
Yeah. Very simple. It's, it's, I mean, actually, to be quite honest with you, and don't tell everybody this, distilling isn't it rocket science, honestly. It's, it's relative, relatively straightforward. But don't go telling everybody. And you didn't hear that from me. Okay? Consistency is the key. <laughs> yes. Consist and one of the things that we, we talk about is consistency and quality. And moving from the wooden box to the sieve shaker gives us that more consistent product all the time. It's getting the, the repeatability of things, actually, and making sure that the grind is consistent all the time. Yeah, we've got so a couple very, of very important. couple of comments on the Porteous Mills. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Guy Dutton, those great, oh, old, no, no, Guy, yeah. those great old English milling machines. Oh, yeah, uh, well, jo yeah. Johnny yeah. Allen built to last fantastic engineering. They were actually victims of their own success, weren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's quite interesting because very much so. I mean, I'm going to come back to it here now. So, yeah, built like a, like a chieftain or a Sherman tank or... Um, you know, a great American tank. This thing, you know, is, is a fair old beast of a piece of kit. Um, and yeah, once you bought one, you never really needed to go back and buy another one. Yeah. Hence the reason yeah. why this one's from 1967. You yeah. visit other distilleries, you've got mills dating back to the 1930s. Um, and yeah. as I say, once you bought one, you didn't buy another one. So both those companies effectively put themselves out of business by not having cust returning customers. Yeah. No, Interestingly that... enough, the, the gentleman that services them now is a fellow called Ronnie Lee. He uh, does probably the majority of the mills in the UK mm -hmm. uh, and abroad, actually. He's, he's doing some in the States now. Um, mm -hmm. And Ronnie actually has the blueprint drawings uh, for Bobby and Portis Mills. So he is able to build a, a replica to the same design as Bobby and Portis did, you know, all That's these years good. ago. Fantastic. Um, and he's a busy man, a very, very busy man. So um, one, one thing I just wanted to ask, you may mention this in the next stage, how each batch of malted barley is, is how many tonnes goes through? For us here, Tam Do, it's, it's just slightly less than 12 tonnes, 11.85 tonnes. So now it's, it's quite important. And I'm actually just walking past the, the weigher panel here as we speak and the weigher, <laughs> just as you're talking about it. <laughs> so that's, in fact, it's actually, you don't normally see this. This is the weigher in here. It's a tipping weigher we've got. Um, and into the top of the mill. That's me looking down into the, the, the mill there. Um, so this is not, not normally open like this. <laughs> um, just reading some somebody's written in the, the dust beside me, uh, which I can't show you, unfortunately. <laughs> um, but uh, it's very important because even at this stage, the, the, the dreaded tax man, the revenue customs man, is already starting to monitor our processes because mm -hmm. he's expecting us to get a certain quantity or, or volume of alcohol from every tonne of malt that we, we grind. Mm -hmm. So it's very important that we have our, our uh, weigher calibrated and checked at least a couple of times a year to make sure it's accurate and recording correctly. So that important we better yeah. get. No, it's just so quiet in here, Gordon, it's unreal. I know, yeah. well, I know whenever I've been there, it's never been quiet. So, <laughs> so, um, so where are you now, Sandy? I've just walked into our Mash tun area. I'm going to kind of turn back around again and, and let you see here. So oh, there we come go. into to the mash tun. Um, we are in the process in here of getting some new flooring. So um, you can maybe see this is one of the projects we've been doing under silent season. Uh, we've changed from some different types of mesh. So it's a wee improvement. And from a safety perspective, it's much, much better for us. But so apologies for some of that kind of wee bit of mess that you'll see in the background in a wee minute or two. But I'm right beside the mash tun as we speak. And this is us now starting to bring the raw materials together. That hot water, that grist that we've ground up, and then subsequently we'll be adding some yeast to it next door when we ferment it. But mash done, quite a big bit of kit here we've got at Tamdu, about eight metres in diameter. Technically, for those who are interested, a stainless steel semi louter mash done, which means that our rakes can go up and down and we can speed up or slow them down, but they don't go in reverse. And I'll let you see inside it, because again, a wee bit unusual. You wouldn't normally see this if you were coming on a tour. Normally, this would be filled up with the, the actual mash as it's going through the process. Mm -hmm. And here at Tamdu, we're doing roughly, well, not roughly, we are doing 16 mashes per week. And that equates, as I said before, to somewhere just about 190 tonnes or somewhere around about 78,000 litres of alcohol per week. So, you know, quite a wow. decent volume that we're producing. Yeah, that's amazing. So you've got your 11.85 tonnes of grist goes in there. Mm -hmm. And then you obviously have your first water at about, what, 63 and a half, something like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Well, what I'm, what I'm letting you see just now is we've got our grist hopper, our feed hopper up here at the top, the, the dark grey. 
then we come down to the mixing screw and then into the mixer where the hot water gets added. We've got two heating tanks, one heating tank, two at the back there, and heating tank one away in the far corner, where the hot water, so the first water is added to that grist and where we start to extract the sugars from within the mash tun itself. Tam do, we still do three waters, quite a traditional distillery. Um, we, we, we don't do the ramping up the temperature for, from start to finish of the mash. We do a first water, a second water, and then a third water, all at elevated temperatures. And right. that's to, to assist taking out the secondary sugars during the mash. And then the third stage of that is actually as a disinfection for our draft, which we sell to farmers for, for feeding to cattle and sheep. So extracting, all, so extracting as much sugar as possible from that 11.85 uh, tons of grist, which uh, you know allows us allows you to hit your your effectively your liters of alcohol per ton of barley yeah. further down the line. That's that's exactly it. So so typically, I mean, when we we talk about uh, malt, you know, we we usually we, we never know how good it's going to perform until we we actually start getting some results back from the maltings. But usually, when we we start to think about our production figures for the year we base some of that on what we would get as an average, which is roughly about 410 litres per tonne of malt. Mm. Uh, and that's, that's a good average figure. I mean, last mm. year, uh, Tamdu averaged only about 405. Um, mm. And that's not peculiar to Tamdu. It just wasn't a particularly good crop year in 2018. Yeah, I remember yeah, just speaking to a lot of people saying it was it was an issue, you know, a lot yeah, lower was, than normal. Yeah, yeah. It, it was more just due to due to the weather conditions. It wasn't and, and the nitrogen content of the the grain, etc. Um, this year, the crop or twenty nineteen crop, I should say, is much much better, and it's looking to be somewhere closer to probably about four twelve to four fifteen. So that that's good for for distillers, right. obviously, um, because yeah, we're going mean, to get hopefully a wee bit more than we anticipated. Yeah, and as you say, you know, it might only be 10, 10 extra litres per, per, per mash, as it were, but that over a year is a lot of alcohol. Yeah. It, it's, it's interesting because it, when it does get to, say, the 420 mark, it becomes mm. actually much, much harder because then, you, you know, that 10 litres suddenly equates to a few extra casks per week. Oh. <laughs> and you've you yeah. then suddenly got to order some additional casks, find space for the casks in warehouses. Mm. So there is pros and cons to it. It's a strange one, sure. actually. Yeah. It's a strange one. Yeah, yeah. But having, having a wee look inside the mash tun here, what we've got, you can see the rakes on the two arms of the, the, the mash tun here. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see, hopefully, the, the perforated or the perforations in the floor. Because what happens in here is that the husks sink to the very bottom, rest on top of the, the perforated floor, mm -hmm. and act as a filter for the wort, the okay. sugary solution that we're going to take through to the, the wash backs to ferment. And that acts in Tamdu, that filtration is very, very important because what we look for during our mashing is what we call clear wort. Now, I mean, I'm, I'm just standing right beside it here. We have our Vorloff where we recirculate. We can actually see the wort clarity either here at this site glass or we've got another site glass over here at our heat exchanger where we can actually check the clarity of wort. Mm -hmm. And what we're looking for there isn't that it's actually down to the, the level of water or gin or, or vodka or anything like that. We're not to, talking about clear spirit. We're talking about something that's just very low in suspended solids. That's yeah, all. yeah. And yeah, and it's, yeah it's carry carry on. On. No, you go on, you go. Well, I mean, that's, a, that's, a, that's a, a really interesting point because not every distillery does that. No. And, and clear wort is your first sort of starting point on the journey of fruitiness in a way. Yes, exactly that. So when we're looking in our wash batch during the fermentation stage, we and we'll talk about it when we go through there in a minute, we're looking at this really vigorous, this very agitated um, fermentation that goes on in the wash batch. So we get this really, really foamy, creamy head on it. And that gives us an absolutely great indication that what we've done that far, and it's not going to change thereafter, that we're, unless we do something really, really drastically different with the stills, that we're going to get this fruity new mix spirit that Tam Do's renowned for. And you know, let's face it, it's, it's, I'm going to talk about it before, it's bursting to get out the bottle at you. I mean, it's just this you know, really fresh, crisp fruitiness that's, that's there. It's just intense. Absolutely. I'm, yeah. I'm standing, I mean, Tam Do, again, for some people that might not have been here for a number of years, um, because let's face it, Tam Do used to have visitors way back in the, the 1990s. Um, it was a distillery where you started your tour at the railway station, as, as we've done tonight, really. Um, but you didn't actually get inside the, dis the distillery. It was a wee bit weird. You, you used to look down at the, the mash tun from the two glass windows you see up here um, in the, the, the camera just now. 
and subsequently you then looked into the where the, the washbacks were and you never got any of that heat that smells that noise that we were just talking yeah. about five minutes ago and i think it's quite yeah. weird because they're all the things you want to experience when you're visiting a distillery mm. yeah oh no absolutely i mean i i you know the you, you know smells the particularly warehouses and just through the whole the whole of the production process is full of smells and 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 uh, you know, not getting that is you're not getting the brrr of the distillery. You know? No, you, you get you get to the heart of it. You know, standing beside, like, we will obviously go there in a minute or two. Standing beside the stills, where you're feeling that heat coming off the copper, and you know, you see folk as if I wonder whether it's hot, as if they're going to touch it. Because yeah. let's face it, you know, the, the copper isn't insulated at the level where people are walking, and it is. It's, it's a bit like wet paint. It's like, oh, is it wet? Well, is it hot? Well, yeah, it's bloody hot. Don't <laughs> don't touch it. You know, but yeah. at the same time. Um, you know, people maybe don't understand some of that, but they're important things to experience when you're visiting a distillery. So, no, um, absolutely, absolutely. I've come through now into our fermentation or where our washbacks are. And again, apologies, but we're also getting a new floor in here. Um, so, there's still some contractors, bits and pieces of equipment kicking about. They're still finishing that off. But you can hopefully see that we've got nine wooden washbacks in here. Uh, quite traditional, Tamdu is quite a traditional distillery still, uh, despite the fact that we are automated in terms of our controls of the process, the, the actual process equipment is still very traditional. And as I said before, nine wooden washbacks, quite big washbacks as well. I mean, I don't think it maybe shows up particularly well here. I'm going to lift one of the lids, though, and we'll have a wee look inside it. Oh, it's hard to do, it's kind of dark. Um, they're filled up with water at the moment, now, our part filled up with water to stop the wood drying out because what happens is when these washbacks are sitting empty, the wood dries and shrinks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. when we then come to refill them again and, and bring the site back into production, mm. they then just leak like sieves. So quite important just to keep them, keep them moist, keep them damp, and that stops that wood from shrinking. So what's the capacity of each one, Sandy? The, the full volume capacity, 80,000 litres but we fill them to 57,500 litres. So probably about, what, two-thirds full? Mm, okay. And what we, what, again, malt distilling is a batch process. So yep. we're taking and filling each wash back in turn. So we'll start with wash back number one, that'll be mash one, wash back two, mash two, etc., and gradually work our way around this room. Fermentation, 59 hours. Right. And what we're looking to do during that fermentation process is that we've added our, our yeast, and at Tamdu we use a, a liquid, a cream yeast, uh, from a, a, one of the manufacturers called Maori, and we'll pitch in 300 litres of yeast, and right away that fermentation process will start. So that conversion from the, the sugar into alcohol. Now the, there's a key aspect here, of course, which is the temperature of the, uh, of the liquid, of the, of, the, of the wort. It's very important, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, one of the bits of kit that I showed you in the, the, beside the mash tun there is, is, is actually, it's one of those kind of really unrecognised pieces of kit in a distillery. Um, it's kind of, it's not, not really considered, you know, and talked about that much, which is our warts cooler. So if you think about it, I'm going to unplug something, something else back in here, Gordon, so hopefully you'll still hear me, can you? Can you still hear me? Okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just going to charge my battery up a wee bit at the same time. Um, so yes, the warts cooler, very important bit of kit. You spoke about it, the temperature in the mash tun, the warts there, roughly about, let's say an average of 70 degrees centigrade. If we added yeast to that, it would just kill the yeast and you'd get absolutely no fermentation whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So really, really yeah. important that that warts cooler cools down the wort as we pump it through to the wash back. And it acts as a, as a secondary benefit to us as well. It takes what's cold water and heats it up to, uh, it's a, a heat exchanger, it heats up that, that water and we can use that for the next mashes. So it's, you know, it serves two purposes. Yeah. But it cools that wort down to somewhere about 17 and a half, 18 degrees, depending on what the outside weather conditions are, what time of year it is. Sometimes some distilleries, depends which washback you're filling as well as the, the proximity to um, the building or whether it's furthest away or an outside wall, etc. So for us, yeah. it's 18 and a half, 18 degrees. And during that fermentation process, what happens is you get the production of carbon dioxide. So it's always great. I mean, we always love it to, to bring visitors to Tamdu. Um, so if you are coming to Tamdu again next year, don't fall for it, please. But we'll always lift one of these washback lids and then say, oh, have a smell. And, and somebody sticks their head in, woof, just about knocks themselves out. <laughs> um, it always gives us a laugh and gives everybody else that's watching them a laugh. So, um, yeah. but, you know, bear it in mind. The yeah, second yeah, yeah. 
is this increase in temperature. So there's some self-heating go going on during the fermentation process, and it generally brings it up to somewhere about 33, 34 degrees. Yeah. And then the third thing that we get here is this, as I said before, this really foamy, creamy head, the switching that goes on. And, and I, again, I'll lift this lid. I don't know whether you can see it. In the... Yeah, you can. I don't know whether you can maybe, but it's too dark to see it. Oh, it's yeah. Head there, which goes round and spins round with these motors on top of the washbacks and is very, very important um, because it breaks up that creamy, foamy head and prevents the washbacks spilling over. Uh, so quite important. Yeah, but Ma Martin Lawson saying he fell for that carbon dioxide thing last year. Well, Martin Lawson should know better. Good to have you back in the UK, Martin. Uh, delighted you're back home safe and sound, and uh, we'll hopefully catch up with you sometime soon. Absolutely. Uh, we, we know how hard and important a job you guys do um, uh, when you're, you're away serving for our, for our country as well. So, uh, well done. Thank you for that. Definitely. So, what? the other thing I wanted to ask, Sandy, because it's something that I've sort of come across having worked for certain companies and distilleries who have stainless steel and others have, have Oregon pine. And it's a big debate and the impact of it. And, and um, you know, I know you have a fairly strong view on it in terms of, in terms of it not making that much of a difference. No, my, my view on it, Gordon, for, for what it's worth, um, is it really depends on the situation as to, to, to what one you would choose um, so from a processing point of view, I've worked at a distillery that's, that had wooden washbacks and was doing an expansion, and it was a debate as to whether we put in more wooden washbacks or some stainless steel washbacks. Mm. Uh, and it was quite a, quite a vociferous de debate, actually. Um, subsequently, it was stainless steel washbacks went in. Um, yeah. The quality of the spirit wasn't any different from a wooden washback and a stainless steel washback. So from, from that production perspective, it doesn't really make, in my view, it doesn't make any difference. However, what I will add, in a room like this, we've, we've replaced all nine of these washbacks since, since we took over Tamdu in 2012. Mm -hmm. Now, would we replace them with stainless steel? Well, let's look at that from the perspective of, well, if you were replacing one at a time, you're going to have to, I'm just pointing out washback number nine here, it was the very last one that was done. You're going to have to take out the roof um, and then lower a stainless steel tank in. It's not particularly practical if you're replacing one washback. No. If you're that's... expanding the site, then do you know what? You'd be expanding on beyond the, the big black and gold TD that you can see. And yeah. you would then be questioning, right, do you want to put a building around it? Because if it's wooden washbacks, you want to put a building around. If it's stainless steel, you can have them outside and insulated, and you don't need that capital expense. Yeah. Or adding I... in a Exactly. I mean, you know, the key thing is there's a lot of debate and people talk about it. But you're never going to pick up a whiskey and go, hmm, no, they must steal. That would be a cracker if somebody did, actually. Yeah, I'd like to do that just for a laugh and see what somebody said. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, no, <laughs> fantastic. It's still quite traditional that Tam do. So, yeah, wooden washbacks, as I said, they've all been replaced. These, these will be in here. They'll certainly see you and me out in terms of our, probably our lives, actually. Um, they'll be in here for about another 40 years. The, the old ones went in in the early 1970s and yeah. replaced effectively from 2012 on. And the last yeah. one was done 20, 2015, 20, 2014. Um, so, and that's yeah. some of that wood that you saw around at the, the station, um, mm -hmm. the washback there, some of the wood from the old washbacks. And similarly, I've, I've actually got one in the front garden as well, a nice wee patio out there. I know you have. Very and, nice. And again, it's a wee bit about reusing... Um, some of the materials, we, you know, we don't want to throw that away. It's fantastic quality wood. It's Oregon pine, yeah. pretty expensive and hard to get a hold of. So absolutely lovely, yeah. So fifty nine hours, we have, we now have a beer, effectively. Yeah, yeah, aye, yeah, exactly that. Yeah, it's, and and you know, let's face it, you, you could drink that. So you know, those it all comes out in the wash, <laughs> um, and you could be starting to to drink the sa the, a sample from our wash backs here, roughly about in between eight and ten percent alcohol. And yeah, you'll get drunk. You will get drunk. Uh, it's a very sweet beer, um, quite warm. Um, you know, it's, it's not something you would choose necessarily to drink. Um, no. But it's, there's there's nothing unpleasant about it. It's quite fruity. It's, it's no, I mean, I, no, a, a pint of tenants may be a better choice for a <laughs> pint of lager beer, but it is ultimately a beer, and it's you know ah. that that that's the that's the process. Well, that, that's, that's essentially us done exactly what it would have been done in a brewery. 
with the exception of the fact it's not done under perhaps sterile conditions that you get in a brewery. Mm. We're relying on some of the bacteria building up on the wooden washbacks as well. And that's maybe mm -hmm. one of the problems you can get with stainless steel washbacks is that they become too clean, too sterile. And that's exactly, yeah. Some of that secondary conversion as well. So that's I, great. I remember, I remember somebody telling me the main difference between wooden and stainless steel washbacks is your cleaning regime. Yes. And that's a very valid point. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. definitely. You can get far too clean in stainless. Yeah. Uh, you, you kind of slow it down a wee bit. I'm going to, I'm going to turn this around. This is one of the things that I like having a bit of laugh. We, we have a lot of fun at Tamdu. Uh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> at everybody's expense. There is nobody that's immune to it. Um, and what we've got here, it's, it's a wee bit like a, a, a board you would maybe get in a golf club. It kind of lists all our team. And we very much are a team here at Tamdu. So it's, it's one of our guys' birthdays today. Ah, uh, oh, it is. is. You know, celebrating his 50th birthday today. Uh, we've Happy got unusual birthday, circumstances. Um, and what we've got here, we've all got nicknames. Um, it's still to get a wee bit updated. There's, there's been a couple of retirees since, since the last time it was updated. But we've, we, and, and one new start. Um, but we've added on names from last year, if, if perhaps people were here. We've, uh, we've got Greg on here now. He wasn't on here, I don't think, a couple of years ago. And Barry. Uh, there was a lot of debate whether it was going to be Barry Manny Lowe. Uh, we've now got Sean on here as well, and we've got Ryan, the cheeky wee farker, um, on here that, that have updated since the last time some people have been here. And that's all very good. Laugh, and it's, it's just a wee bit What's of laugh. What's your nickname, Sandy? Uh, my nickname up here, oh, sorry, my, the cable's not long enough here, is Sandy Big Mac McIntyre. You do uh, like a Big there's, Mac. There's a lot of different rumours as to why it's Big Mac. <laughs> uh, right, I'll yeah. Let, let people decide for themselves. Yeah, no, you do, you do like a Big Mac. Well, okay, I'll go with that one, Gordon. Yeah, I'll go yeah. with that. No. Um, so we're heading, what, through to the still house now? Yeah, I'm cutting through the control room, and it's, it's, a, it's a wee bit messy at the moment. Again, contractors have got some, some things in here. We're putting up some new cupboards. We've got some new equipment that we need to, to store, and we're in the process of, of putting all that away and tidying up with that. And then here, oh, actually, sorry, I put up something else up here that I've got to show you. Um, and again, for those who follow Tam Do, I know they'll, they'll be more than aware of this. I'm going to show you a couple of things first off, and it's just it really extols the virtues of where we are with the quality of the, the spirits that we're now producing here at the site. So I've got here an award that we won back in 2019 um, for our single cask, the team edition uh, single cask that the whole yeah, team here chose to Tam Do. That was a cracking whiskey. It was, yeah, that, that real European oak. European oak, rich. Absolutely, yeah. meaty, what a beast of a, a whiskey that was. Yeah, well. yeah uh, lovely. World Whiskies Awards, the best scotch in Speyside, single cast, single malt. Uh, absolutely great. You know, we were absolutely thrilled to bits. It, it's on display here in the control room all the time because it's the team that won that award. And it's there to, to show off to anybody that comes in and, and passes in, in the, the site here. And if what I've done is put up this up beside it at the moment. Um, so, yes, we're, we're, I'm going to be having a piece of this in a moment or two Ooh. because we surpassed Ooh. in 2020 uh, and yeah. you know, got there the world's best. So it's not just the best Scotch space side. We're now in. Was, was, was that a cask you picked, Sandy? Yeah, thanks, Gordon. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, my head's getting bigger here every second. Uh, <laughs> yes, it's the, the, the time to do Sandy McIntyre single cask. And it was, you know, at least so it goes with it, the single cast the team chose, it was done by majority decision. It wasn't the cast that I chose, and we mm -hmm. decided in 20, 20, well, 2019 it was, it was bottled, uh, to bottle the one that I chose, and we've won the world's best with it. So, you know, absolutely thrilled to bits, but really what I'm trying to say is, you know, this is the quality of the... Every time they, yeah. The liquid that we're producing and out our casts and putting in bottles now. No, absolutely. You're recognised to that extent is, you know, is just phenomenal. It's really, really nice to, to know that people are enjoying it and, and celebrating in our successes as well. Unfortunately, that, that single cask of mine is now sold out, um, but we're, we've got something else we need to try later on as well. I'm cutting through the control room, so this is where our operators normally based. We've got a team of five uh, distillery operators and they're based in this control room here, where they're, they're recording uh, the production and, and measurements and temperatures, etc., mm -hmm. etc. Et and then I'm cutting into the still house. Oh, no, here the we go. The distillery, let's face it. Let's it is the heart it. of the distillery. And oh, this is it. So here we are. Really quiet and peaceful. It is. Gosh, amazing. Really unusual. And uh, 
in the corner, which we were really wanting to show off to everybody, is we had quite a lot of copper work done in October of uh, 2019. In fact, we had all our copper work done in uh, October 2019, rather than having some done in March 2020, which was perhaps actually beneficial considering all the circumstances as well. So what we've got here is our number two wash still, all particularly bonny, and we had it lacquered as well, which is a wee bit unusual for, for mm. a distillery that doesn't have visitors coming round. But we thought it was just too good an opportunity to miss having that lacquered and making it looking really, really attractive in here in our still house. And I'll pan mm. up. What we've got is a rather five stills. I'm going to go down some stairs here. Just going to be a bit careful. Um, so we've got six stills, three pairs of stills here. We've got three wash, three spirit. And each pair works as a pair by themselves. So the number one wash on the left-hand side here always works with the number one low wines or spirit still. Okay. And same thing with number two, etc. Work together, so it's like a couple, a married couple, and they probably they they seem to get on all the time, which is a wee bit unusual. <laughs> uh, especially been stuck together all the time. As you know, so, uh, my battery's got a wee bit low. I'm going to try and see if I can plug into a different charger. Excuse me, a wee second, of Gordon, if you could take over. Yeah, no bit. problem. You know. So yeah, no, I mean, I think the three pairs of stills are. Uh, you know, the first thing you notice when you walk into the still house on is that they're a very similar shape there's no difference discernible difference in shape between any of them in terms of all the wash stills look identical and all the spirit stills look identical which of course is crucial because we've been talking about it all the way through the consistency is really important um yes. it is it's, it's, it's absolutely critical for us in in terms of getting that consistency right in terms of the quality of the new make spirit and yeah. uh, and what we're looking for is that fruity character so yeah. our fills, again, everything's automated. So our cut points are automated here in the process. The mm -hmm. instruments we have at the back of our spirit safe here, uh, we've got densimeters that measure the, the, the strength and the, the, uh, the, the temperature of the liquid and then correct for that back to 20 degrees so that we're always cutting at the same point in the process, making sure that we are being consistent with our cut points. Um, yeah, and you know, and then you've obviously, you know, as you say, just looking at the design of the stills, you've got line arms that head down the way, which is, which is always a, a sort of, a, you know, a, an element of a lighter spirit as well. Yes, we had uh, we had a, a couple of new line pipes put in again. Uh, number number three wash was put in in uh, October. Mm -hmm. um, so again, we're consistently, you know, assessing the quality of the copper, the thickness of the copper, and then actually doing any replacements as required. Um, yeah, no, absolutely. And then you've got in front of you is the spirit safe. Yeah, um, I mean, I'm, I'm conscious my battery's a wee bit low, so I'm, I'm, I'm apologising ahead of it because I'm going to speed through this quite quickly so I can get across to somewhere to, to charge it off a, a decent uh, charger. Um, but yeah, what we've got here on the left-hand side is our, our low wine safe, which is actually the liquid coming from our wash distillation. So we've got three bowls here, middle one yeah. for number one, number two wash, and number three wash. And what we're getting off of that distillation it's somewhere about an average of about 26, 27% alcohol. Mm. And that's the first stage of the distillation in a malt distillery. We're going to do another distillation on that and bring that strength up to somewhere about 70%, 72%. And we'll do that then in the low wine or spirit still. And this time round, what we're looking for is particular cut points. So we're looking only from a portion of the distillation this time round. And that's why what you see in this situation is two bowls We've got the bowl on the left-hand side for our low wines, the, the, the start of the distillation, where it's more the, the, the methanols rather than the ethanols that we get coming mm, off. The bad under. stuff. Yes, uh, the stuff that blinds you. And then it'll go on to spirit on the right-hand side of the bowl mm. and then cut back again to the faints at the very end of the distillation on the left-hand side. And that's the undesirables. That's mm. the, the flavours that are particularly uh, difficult to mask. Yeah. And Put them in a cask, even after a number of years, it still comes out as, as even sometimes quite butyricky, a wee bit like like baby sickness, like a, um, a really an unpleasant smell that you can't yeah smell and taste that you can't get rid of. So, so we have the four shots and effectively the faints in one tank. We have our new make spirit in another tank. Those four shots and faints, they'll go back through the system. They do, yes. So we've got we've, we've walked past one of the receiver rooms and we're just going to go into to one of the other ones. So that that liquid from each of the the spirit runs from the four shots and the faints get mm -hmm. put into a tank, the low wines and faints receivers. 
There's one for each of the, the, the stills that we've got, so there's three different tanks. And then that gets introduced with the next batch. And effectively, some of that's going around in circles all the time. But there's still alcohol in there as well. Of and course, you know, yeah. quite stingy Scots people, we want to recover as much alcohol as we possibly can. Of course. Make sure that we're getting all that uh, all that great liquid out of there and to be able to yeah. put it in there. Absolutely. How's your battery bearing up? Um, it's, it's not doing great. Um, okay. But I'll wander across just in a moment. Or well, two. yeah, I mean, that's the. Get get it plugged in if you need to. But yeah, no, it's uh, it's so so in terms of the the spirit that we produce. If I was to ask you what the sort of, you know, the style of it, what what you would how you would describe it, it is remarkably fruity. I find how amazing how fruity it is. It's got a little bit of oiliness. I find to it as well. Yeah, it's um, it's it's to me it is so intense. People people actually want to get Tamdu New Make as a base for cocktails. Um, it's, you know, we're talking about, well, we, we filled the cask at 63.5%, but in terms of the strength from the stills, we're talking somewhere about 70 to 72%. Mm -hmm. And it is this real intense, crispy, fresh, fruity new make spirit. So there's a hint of apples in there, green apples, some pear. Um, none of that, um, of that peated malt, or that very lightly peated malt comes through at all. Um, it's, it's quite unusual. It doesn't come come in in the, the you don't pick up the nose on it in the malt. You don't taste it in the malt, and it doesn't come through in the new make either. So it's a wee bit unusual. Mm. Um, but it's just this yeah. really bright, crisp, fruity, intense new make that we get. So I'm, and I'm that's why it works. So with me, Gordon, I was going to have a wee sample of this in the, the still house. I'm going to take it across the filling store, which is a bottle of my single cask. Oh, um, right. Okay. Here into again. One of these areas we kind of cut through uh, generally for the distillery. It's you know, not an awful lot to see. We've got our, our wash charger over here where the wash from the wash backs come through before it goes into the, the wash stills. We've got one of those low wines and faints tanks just right here beside me, standing mm -hmm. in tank number three. So at the end of every week, myself and my assistant manager, Ian, we come in and it's, it's quite important we measure the, the production figures for the week for the distillery. And it's one of those traditions that I love about Tam Do actually, um, is that the, the manager and assistant manager come round and measure the alcohol content of these three bats as well. And other distilleries I've worked at, it's been down to an operator that does it. But it just kind of gives us a wee bit of our position within the distillery as well. So Ian and yeah. I come round every Friday, we have a blather, it's, it's our wee kind of chance to have that kind of see what's going on in the distillery, the two of us going round together as well. So I thoroughly yeah. enjoy it. No, absolutely, absolutely. Good. We are, the, one of the other things we've got up here, for the Whiskey Festival this year, we had considered, and you can perhaps see a, a, a strange door in a wall, <laughs> we had actually considered this year uh, about doing an art show here at the distillery as well. So we, we've converted an area which used to be the old um, malt bin loft uh, way back in the 1897 area. This is actually where the mash tun used to be. I'm standing in. The mash tun used to be here. The malt bins and the, the, the grist bins used to be through where that door is. And we've converted that loft into a storage area. But we had considered, actually, as I say, having a wee um, art show or something, something a wee bit different up there this year, just to, to, to change the style of things. We found a wee yeah. bit no, absolutely. Very good. I'm going to wander across, again, down some stairs that people don't normally come down. So it's a wee bit dark here. But we'll wander down here. And okay. out the door back into the yard of the distillery where if you were coming into the distillery normally it's where you would arrive I'll yeah look at what's, what's, going on what's going on in the yard yeah. and it's still dry and it's still a pleasant evening as well it's beautiful it's it's beautiful it, it is even that here absolutely look at that i see blue sky my lord it's, it's a beautiful evening Be i mean you know we take it for granted where we are up here. It's the the scenery is fantastic, the wildlife's fantastic. Oh, We're able to go out for a walk, um, and and taking in the nature of the area as well is just absolutely, you know, we're so so lucky. But what we've I remember today, actually, sorry, just to say, I remember talking about that. I remember one of my first trips to Tandu. We were just outside the entrance, and I saw about six uh, red squirrels. Just, just, yeah. m m just unbelievable. We had a group last year, um, and they were up from, from England, it was, and it was baby squirrels, baby oh. red squirrels. And I'd never seen baby red squirrels myself. I mean, there, there's red squirrels running about the site here. And uh, to me, they're just timeless. They're just so much fun just running about the place. 
but it was wee baby ones, yeah. and the guests were just so taken with seeing them. It was absolutely unreal. You know, it was it was fantastic to see the the smile and delight on their faces when when they saw that. But I'm here now in the yard. We've got the the distillery down the bottom there. We were in on the the left hand side. The big three windows is where the washbacks were where the, the kind of flags and the, the Tamdu distillery sign in the corner there. You can see the, the draft hopper in the corner just sticking out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then and on the right-hand side there is where the stills were. So we've, we've kind of walked around in a wee bit of a circle, mm. and we're back out in the distillery yard. My office in here, where the, the just behind the bins, eh? obviously, they put me in the right place. <laughs> um, then, again, for those who, who, again, were familiar with, with Tamdu in the past, we used to have a maltings here. We used to have salad and box maltings. They mm. are no longer here. We demolished them two years ago. And you can still see some of the stone uh, from, from those over here in the corner. Mm-hmm. We were in the process of uh, going through a planning application for a, for a new office. Um, and we will be putting up a new office here at the site in the, the near future, hopefully. Um, and we'll be building on land. So we're trying to use some of that stonework um, again. Mm. In this of course, year. yeah, it's such amazing, yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, and getting that back in use around here at the distillery again for a new office, so we're looking forward to that. And yeah. then what we do is go into our filling store, one of our filling stores. Oh, fantastic, into the filling store. Now, this is where this is where the spirit gets filled, obviously, into our, well, this is the thing that makes Tamdu very different. Only Oloroso sherry cask, Sandy. Do you, do you think, am I going to risk it, Gordon? Should I stand on? Up to you. <laughs> <laughs> it would be making it very public, wouldn't it? Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe not. Up to you. Oh, oh. Ah, that's because I'm carrying a bottle. <laughs> All right, yeah. I've got lots of things in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> so the filling store is, um, as it exactly is, it's where we take, we, we have the new make spirit coming across um, and it's filled into casks, and that's what we do in there. It sure is. Sig- and I've got my colleague here, Ian Whitecross. He's joined me, my assistant manager, and it's a great privilege to have him with us because what we're going to talk about tonight is some of the releases that we were going to be doing for the Whiskey Festival. Because at this time, uh-huh. we traditionally release a couple of special whiskies. Obviously, we spoke about Dalby Alley 3. Uh, mm. the releases around the railway station uh, mm-hmm. and we're going to take you through what cask or what, what actually, um, I'm not going to say cask it's not a single cask um, what one of the the preparations, the blends that, that John Glass our blender prepared for us, we'll, we'll talk about the four samples he sent up to us to choose and what, why we chose the one we did and then uh, as I say I have got Ian Whitecross who has been the lucky person that's chosen the Tamdu single cast this year. Um, up to with those awards that we've obviously had. But it's got a hard act to follow. Um, I know what he's chosen personally is absolutely a cracker of a cask and we're, we're going to take you through uh, that release that we're going to be doing as soon as we get the bottles available. And right. what we're going to be doing tonight hopefully is is whetting some people's appetites mm. because yes we, we've got the, the, the bottles and uh, chosen and one of these is already sitting in a vat at uh, our bottling hall, just ready to be put in bottles to then be mm-hmm. sold on. So, you know, if, if the people that were coming to, to Tamdu for the Whiskey Festival are wanting bottles perhaps maybe signed either by Ian or myself or both, a uh, great opportunity to perhaps get some low numbers of the bottles and actually um, have them purchased and pre-ordered. So that, Yeah. Um, that, that's exactly right. That's really what we wanted to do, was to give people the tour which they would have got, but also the opportunity to get these whiskies at, a, at a, you know, the lower numbers. We can get them signed by Sandy and um, uh, Ian as well to, to just really uh, say to you, you can't come, but we want to make you feel as involved as possible. So not, now that's a strong look, sir. That is a very, oh my God. God. <laughs> okay, right. Okay, strong, strong. We're struggling to hear you, so you may need to come a little bit closer. Okay, well, we, we, we're obviously adhering to social distancing rules. Here. Of course. Well, um, as we said before, we're in the filling, we're in filling store number one, um, and this is where we normally fill in tasks that can't do. Um, it's obviously empty at the moment. We've still got some spirit in the receiver next door, ready mm-hmm. to get 
went again. And uh, we would normally have said, if you're on the tours, come do, bring you in here, take you into our warehouses, let you see some of our dunnage, the warehouse that we've got in here, and generally cut down the stairs and pass some of our older casks that we've got yeah. here as well. Yeah. Oldest cask we've got dates back to 1961. And actually, again, Gordon, you've tried it as well. Uh, as have Ian, as have I. Um, it's Tough not, day in the office, that one. <laughs> it's, it's not the best liquid. And, you know, it's... It's one of these things that that's, I'm quite keen to get through to people. Age isn't doesn't always necessarily mean it's the best. No, absolutely yeah. right. And and that uh, goes for for non-aged whiskies. And you know, there's some fantastic blended whiskies out there as well. So let's not. You know, no, absolutely. I've um, got a question just from Martin who says, "You mentioned exclusively seasoned with Oloroso. Has there been any any experimentation with other sherry varieties? Pretty simply, not really." <laughs> no, <laughs> not not really. No. I'll use one, and the answer to that's no. <laughs> yeah. No. I mean, we're still at the very early stage of Tamdi, very simply. But what we know is, we really know that it's worked so well in Oloroso. We've got wonderful suppliers. We produce wonderful whiskey. At the moment, there's no need to do anything else. It's just great, great liquid. So, the Dalby Alley too. And I just want to just could you all just grab a glass, gentlemen? I just got something I want to do very quickly because it's. Oh, it's oh. Thursday night. It's good. eight o'clock. I just want to. Sorry, good. We don't have any Dalby Alley two in here with us. We've got some Dalby Alley three. Well, we'll could you, if you? I just wanted to do a little cheers and a little thank you to all the NHS workers because oh. it's eight o'clock on Thursday. Watching my watch at the same time, so yeah, I'm with you with that one for sure. Eight o'clock. Um, they put um, in a fantastic effort at the moment. Yeah, they're absolutely fantastic. So. I think clapping on, on YouTube is a good thing maybe to do so. Fantastic. Thank you very much. But cheers to them all as well for just doing a great job at this difficult time. Cheers to all the NHS workers and the, the medical workers around the world fighting this virus. And uh, yes, we, we, we very much value all the work that all the essential workers are doing at the moment and the Absolutely. essential services as well from from right all the way through from the police, ambulancemen, etc. and those in the hospitals as well, NHS. And even those working in shops as well. You know, let's face it, we still need to get paid. And, and lorry drivers, yeah. even bringing raw materials to Tambu as well. They're all equal. Of course. Paid. So here's cheers to you. Cheers, everyone. Of course. So cheers. Yeah, so you guys have the... Thank you. You God. have the Dalby Alley 3. That, actually, so I appreciate you keeping an eye on So you have the Dalby Alley 3. Can you still hear me, yeah? I can still hear you. Can you hear me? No, we can't, we can't hear you, Gordon, at the moment. But um, oh. sure whether you can still hear us. Uh, I can hear you. In the filling store here at Tamdu. And what I've got, what we just poured for our we celebrated like last for the essential workers, is one of the Tamdu single casks. And it is that Sandy McIntyre single cask. As I said before, unfortunately, it's sold out from the, the website. We sold all the bottles a couple of weeks ago. But I felt it was also just quite important to bring it in to let you see what we've got with it in comparison to what we've got with Ian single cask. Because what I've got here is an American oak single cask. So we're more in that lighter spirit. We're in that um, vanillas, that um, fudge type taste and nose on the, the, the palate and the back of the throat as well. And that finish as well. With Lovely. Ian, and Ian, I don't know whether you want to grab one of the glasses here and have a pour of one of yours here. Um, this is yours here. I'll let you grab it. Can you hear me, gentlemen? It's what Ian has selected as his single cask is an American oak, yeah, a European oak cask, I should say. Yeah. Cheers. Sandy, so can you hear me? You can see this particularly well in the camera, but yeah. I've got here my single cask, this American oak cask, and then Ian's European oak cask. And this cask, 57%, cask 5892 from 2003. And again, you know, it's this really dark, sort of deep mm. colour in it that we can see. And I hope that comes out particularly in the camera. I'm going to bring it as close as I possibly can. Yeah, 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 it does. Can and, you... and you can hopefully see the colour difference between the two. two Sandy, can you not hear All me? do, as we know, is natural colour. Um, and always natural colour and always been matured in sherry casks, that Oloroso sherry cask. Gordon, can you hear us just now? Can you, I can, if you can hear me? 
that's, that's fine. I've got Gordon. Can, Gordon. can you not hear me? That's not so bad. We can't Have you? Can, you know, we can't can you? Gordon. Can, I think it's coming feed from the feed direct from the, the police store here. So that's I'm quite pleased with that because we're fed up listening to Gordon. What does he know? <laughs> can you? Can you, can you not hear me at all? He's pretending he can't hear us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but Ian, Ian, can you sort of talk us through a wee bit about your time here at Tamdu? Because you've been here quite a wee while now. Yeah, I've been here. started at Tamdu in 2006. Um, Dedrington Group. I was process operator back then, until 2010, until it was mothballed. Um, I then left the industry and came back in 2012, when Ian McLeod was the bought over at Tamdu. Um, I came back with Sandy Coots and Harry Wilson. We were three original Tamdu guys and we trained up the new recruits and they were still up and running. And then in the October of that year, I was promoted to team leader. And then in 2014, I was promoted to assistant manager. And that's when Sandy came on board as well. And it must have been a great delight for you, though, to see Tam Duke coming back into operation. It was, came back in it was good to see it coming back into operation. And then in 2013, when we launched Tam Duke mm-hmm. as a brand, it was really nice because it was never pushed as a single model oh, okay. hard before. And then Ian McLeod's really pushing it as a brand. So. And if I remember back to roughly about five or six, about five years ago, no, it was six years ago actually when, when I started here, so 2014 was I was here, um, I remember us going to cask number one next door. Oh, that's yeah. cask number one. Uh, What's important about that one? That's the cask number one was the cask that I'd done the very first marsh back in 2012 and I also did the first distilling and then I actually filled the cask as well. So the cask number one is just through the door through here. And it's actually all the end of it's all signed by all of us that were that were here on that first that first filling. And I know again, thinking back, I, I think it was about three years ago that, that we went to it, four years ago maybe even now, we drew a sample from it. Yeah, we drew a sample from it. It was very dark already. Yeah. yeah. Still a bit harsh on the Yeah, it was <laughs> it, 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 we could tell it was a, a very young whiskey. But that colour that was coming in from the really cask, from the wood, was absolutely phenomenal. And uh, we drew a, a sample year after that as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, so a, a three-year-old and a four-year-old, I remember it. And, you know, the colour was still developing, but some of that harshness was starting to come away from yeah. it. It was just starting to get a wee bit lighter, a wee bit smoother and softer at the back of the throat. We need to take another step. I know. <laughs> <laughs> we will. We will. We will. But I think there's actually, because we had to bore it, we, we weren't able to just get the bung out of it. It wasn't just quite as yeah, easy as that. So. Uh, it was a wee bit more awkward than maybe perhaps some of the other casts, but yeah, it's it's, it's interesting just watching the, the colours and the flavours develop into the, the, the spirit as it's maturing in the, the warehouses here, and that's one of the, the great things about you know being able to be in here at Tamdu is to explore the warehouses like that and draw some samples and just see what's happening with the with the liquid as it's actually developing over the, the maturation periods. So Ian, you know this this one you've chosen what 2003 2003. What tells you about the story behind it then? What's um, well, you, sp- you spoke about a cask for the team, so the whole team picked the cask, and then the, the next year, which was last year, was was one you choose, and then you suggested that would I like to choose one, so I'd be delighted with that. Well, that's why I had my signature on front of a task that nobody had been able to read my signature anyway. <laughs> you <so> much detail, <laughs> eh? I'd practice that. Even. <laughs> So, well, um, it actually, we'd never actually started sampling for choosing my cask. I got a list of 150 casks from John Glass, the malt master, to take samples from and send down to him for quality checking. Mm-hmm. So the lads sampled the casks and 150 samples were sent <laughs> by office. It's a hard job, honestly, <laughs> folks. It's really, really hard. Believe us, take our word for it. Yeah, it's hard. <laughs> Can I just check something, lads? I would know it's maybe three or four. Let's see. I can't see what you're saying. Yeah, I'm gonna read it. Have you? I lift it up a bit. You play. You suddenly have placed your phone on mute. No. Have you think so. plugged your phone in? Live. All right. Okay. No. I, wait. Well, maybe I have to move this outside, Gordon. I'm going to yeah. take it outside and see whether it's something with the signal in here. But no, it's not on mute. 
Can we see it? Sorry. I will take this outside. See, well, it's a wee bit Can you hear me now? Side. Is there any Can better signal outside, Gordon? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? I can do here. We got wee technical issues here. I don't know whether any we can oh, hear or not. I you, might come out. And... You guys were doing fine. They were doing fine. Um, uh, we'll, we'll see if we can sort out oh, the technical issues. Can you hear me again, um, Gordon? I, we, we, everybody can hear you. We can all we can hear. go back in. Just apologies. There we go. Technical issues, but uh, no, I think we got the gist of, of the evening in terms of uh, what a great tour around the distillery by Sandy, giving us an insight into how he is a distillery manager works, how the spirit um, comes together, and then uh, hearing from from Ian and Sandy about obviously about Ian's cask and the Dalby Alley number three. So um, we'll see if we can get them back. If, if we can't get them back um, um, and they can't hear me, we, we, you can listen to them. You don't need to hear me. So um, we'll see where they're at and uh, we'll just see if that works. And if not, you can listen to them. We'll just see if we can get them back in. in. Sandy, can you hear me now? Can you hear me? No? Can you not hear me? I, no. You carry on. Okay. You, well, I've come outside the... Can anybody hear me at the moment? I'm not sure. So apologies for those who, who can't hear me. Um, I'm outside at Tamdu. Um, we've obviously got some technical issues here. Um, I'm waiting to go live again. So we'll see what happens here. Sorry, everybody. Email you a link for some. Can anybody hear me now? Gordon, can you hear me? Um, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear hey. me? There we go. Okay. Um, I, we, we did think for, you know, apologies for that. We did think it might be a wee bit difficult in our filling store because it's there's casks up above us and casks down below us in that area as well. So it's not great for the 4G signal. We don't have Wi-Fi, et cetera, in there either. No, I think, the, I think the only problem was that um, was that Everybody could hear you and me, but we couldn't hear each other. Ah, all right, okay. Oh, so it wasn't wasn't as bad as all that then. No. Uh, Ian and I have come outside now. We're out in the fresh air, and we'll, we'll put it up here. Uh, hopefully, it'll give us a, a wee bit of better angle. There we go. Beautiful. Uh, Ian, Ian was talking as uh, part of his single cask, and the reason why he chose that. So, we were, with the fact that he sampled about 150 yeah. samples and 150 samples every morning. <laughs> Nose. <laughs> so he wasn't home four, drunk every day, folks. Uh, yeah. every morning. <laughs> no, no, it was three or four every morning. Um, then he's putting back on the on the desk. And one morning when I come in and open this one, and I was, oh, like that one. Mm. Up the nose, and he thought that's good too. So just picked up the phone, phone John Glass, give him the cast number. He says, "What's the crap with this cast?" Oh, just checking quality. He says, "Can I have it for my single cast?" And he just phone back later and said that's it reserved all yours <laughs> so we, we Result. officially officially to tonight then is the launch of this uh, single cask um it, it is it isn't in the bottle yet this is the one that's actually just sitting waiting to be bottled i mean it literally was due to go down the bottom line the day after all the different things happened with the the situation that we're in right now so it, the boxes are there the the, the liquids there the bottles are there is literally just waiting to go into the bottle and what That's we right. is this fantastic European oak single cask. It's, uh, it's from a sherry butt, first of all sherry butt, 676 bottles of it. Um, and as soon as we can get that bottling line going, then this will be in the bottle and will be available. And what we're, we're doing tonight, because normally this would be available during the Whiskey Festival and it would be there. And as I said before, when visitors are here quite often, they ask yeah. for something on their bottles. It'll be an unusual one because Ian, I think, is practicing his signature <laughs> much more frequently this year than he has perhaps in the past. Because what we're saying is that for, for anybody that's, that's on the feed tonight that would have been joining us here at the festival, is that if they wanted to pre order a bottle of it, then we'd be, be absolutely delighted. It's obviously subsequent to uh, us getting the bottle line going and the bottles getting released. Um, but Ian, or I, or both of us actually, would be delighted to sign that bottle for you uh, as if you had been visiting us at the festival so exactly so yeah no we want to offer that to you as um 
you know, the people who are going to be coming to the Spirit of Space like the festival. So um, it's your opportunity to get in early. I'm sounding a bit weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it is very much that because, as, as we know, the single cast last year was extremely successful. Um, it's completely sold out. So, you know, I'm, I, I don't see any reason this whiskey will be as equally successful because it is a cracker of a cask. In terms of the, the nose of it, I mean, what we've got here, that pineapple, there's some licorice in there as well. Toffee, that's just right here. Toffee, Ian's getting on it. Just, just love the smell of the toffee. Yeah, yeah. it's that, that sweet mm. sherry, that, that real kind of fruitiness coming yeah. through as well, isn't it? Yeah, I'd like to point out I don't have a sample of it. Well, oh, you don't, you don't Gordon, no. And, and actually, I, I think you maybe saw, we actually at the distillery only have a small 100 mil sample of it as well. So it's, it's fine. Kind of tonight between us as well. Okay, I've got something else. Uh, in November time or earlier than that when we actually chose this as a single cast. But, so a couple of questions. I'm sounding very odd. Can you hear me? Yes, can you hear you okay? Okay, I'm, I'm sounding a little bit odd. Um, first one is to eat what's your favourite whiskey besides Pam? What's your fifth favourite whiskey besides Pam? Do I'm gonna get a wee cable out, Gordon? I'll let you answer that one. Uh, you just have to be Tam Do, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. No. Tam Do through and through, so no competition. You must be very proud of your single cast ready to go. Yes, right, I'm just gonna get my, my yeah. extension cable out for the, the power for the. <laughs> The, uh, it's done well for an hour and 15 minutes. You know what light they are, folks? I'm just going to get you plugged in and back on. Can you still I'm hear still, me? I'm still here. I hopefully... Can you hear me? Yeah, I can still hear you. Oh, good. Fine. Um, good question, question as well from Alistair. Will every single cast pre-ordered be signed? Um, yes. yes, we, we will. Yeah, we will get them what signed. We need to do that is... Uh, if, if people are pre-ordering, and, and actually, again, it's one of the benefits to, to the people that we've invited along tonight. Um, the, the, there will be a virtual shop that is only open to you guys. So yeah. people that have come on the call tonight um, will get a link. Uh, and it, it was actually due to go live, I think, at 8 o'clock, if I remember rightly. We'll get a link. It went live and it's working because... Cheers, Gus. All oh, right. <laughs> cheers, Gus. Oh, cheers, Gus. <laughs> it's live already. Then or four, is it? <laughs> um, oh, excellent news. Um, so that w what we've done with that is we've given all the people that were due to come to the festival that exclusive opportunity to make sure they can secure one of these uh, bottles of either the Dalby Alley and or Ian's single cask. And yes, I can 100% guarantee um, it's, it's going to be maybe a bit awkward and, and by all means, if you, want to, if you particularly want both our signatures or just one of our signatures, by all means, email either the info at Tamdu and we can arrange whether it's both or just one of us because you may not have one mine on it. I think what I'll be doing when I buy mine is just getting to sign mine. So, yeah. Um, it seems more. <laughs> more yeah. yeah. I would agree. Yeah. So, so, anything else to add, gentlemen? Uh, yes, I've got something else I want to add with oh. you. Uh, is we haven't spoken yet about what we've done with Dalby Alley 3 this year. Um, we have, and I'll have to go back into the filling store to bring the samples out, is the, the new release. Again, it's always done at the Whiskey Festival time, 1,000 bottles. Um, we oh. have again maintained the price of £90, which I'm thrilled to bits with. Uh, Ian Weir, uh, Gordon and myself always have a discussion every year. Um, should we put the price up, put it up to £100? No, I'm a firm believer. This is a whiskey that I think people should be able to afford. And uh, it's it's a fantastic it's high stunning um, To me, a thousand bottles is still limited. The bottles are numbered, mm -hmm. and the fact that uh, again, it's, yes, it's, I'm not going to say it's a cheap whiskey, but it's an affordable whiskey. It's one of those mm -hmm. ones that you, you can afford to put aside, and actually, it's great value. It's, it's amazing whiskey. The style of it. I mean, Ian's whiskey. I never touched it. They are fifty-seven percent. So that full cast strength you're getting here. The Dalby Alley 3, what I've got here, um, our master blender, Ian mentioned him and I mentioned him earlier on, John Glass, uh, down in our head office. He prepares samples to send up to Tam New. Uh, so back in November time, John sent us up four samples, um, just giving a, a, a 
you know, I'm not going to say a random number, but a number. So it's, it's no reference to, to what the, the liquid is that's in them in terms of the, the makeup, in terms of American, European first styles, refills, etc., or the ages of any of those whiskies. But four samples, given a, a number and they've got strength on them there. So the strength ranging from what, 61.3 to 62.1, which is where we generally are with the Dalby Alleys. We've, I think we've been 62.3 yeah. and 62.1, I think, going in memory, or 62.2. Um, and you know, typically that higher strength, and I've mentioned it earlier on when we're around at the station, not because it's relatively young whiskey. Tam do up until about three or four years ago was actually filling at 68 and a half. It was even wasn't it? Or 68? You know, we're filling strength 69 eight. 69 eight. Oh, there you are. No, I'm glad I brought my, glad I brought the assistant <laughs> manager to keep me right. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, that that's even up until as recent as well, three or four years ago. Mm. So we are talking, you know, whiskey that, that can be, you know, a decent age, it's in there. And what happens is that we sit down, we nose these samples, we taste these samples, we add a wee drop of water to them, and then determine which one it is we want in the bottle as Dalby Alley. And mm-hmm. this year, it's, uh, again, doesn't mean anything to anybody, but it's uh, number 673 was chosen. Uh, it stood out by Country Mile amongst the four of them. One of them I think it was number uh, 842, slightly metallic. Uh, just didn't leave that nice mouth feel in your mouth after after you finished it. Uh, 415, I think, fantastic on the nose. Um, 548, not so powerful on the nose. 673, had the Nailed nose. It. But you actually added a wee drop of water to it and it just released something else. It just, mm-hmm. you know, it was like, whoa. Uh, the, water, the water, actually, with this one does make a difference in terms of the flavours. Yeah. We're delighted with 673. It's, again, sitting ready uh, ready to be bottled. Um, and it would have been bottled and ready for the festival. And w- what we've got with it um, is, you know, a- another great Dalby Alley release. Um, mm. They're becoming quite collectible. Not that I extol um, the fact that people should be collecting whiskey. We make it for folk to drink. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So please, please, you know, open a bottle. If you've got one, get tore in about it. Um, have a dram out of it, Dalby Alley 1, Dalby Alley 2, and if you ever buy a Dalby Alley 3, do the same. That's the reason why we, we stick this. Um, absolutely. And ladies and gentlemen, all the, the Dalby Alley 3 and the single casks are now open for you to purchase as your exclusive link. Well, again, um, what we're, we're saying, because again, yeah. no people are up with is Gordon. Uh, and we love doing it. We actually, we, we quite enjoy doing it. It, it turns in. And when you, when you do your signature on a, on a bottle or something like that, you're always trying to make sure it looks like the signature. <laughs> so, and it's quite hard, <laughs> it's like, well, especially if, after you've had a few drams. It's no particular need to get your signature right. Um, but I'm going to get a wee glass. I mean, can you get me a wee glass? For uh, there's still some just at the filling head. And uh, now the one thing, just the one caveat we just want to say is that the delivery is subject to a little bit of what's going on at the moment in the world. So, so you're not going to get these next, but um, you know you will get them. and You will be the first to get them. But this year, opportunity to get in and get those lower numbers and those signed ones. Yeah. I mean, I, I, what I'll say, just, you know, if we're talking about the numbers, yes, all the bottles individually numbered, all the patching individually numbered. And that, that also takes a wee bit of time going through the bottling hall as well. When yeah. A, a wee bit of rework going through that. So um, there will be a bit of we all time. We bottle number one and we won't, and, and, or it's very, very difficult if somebody says, oh, I would like bottle number 73. It's, um, yeah. Just a wee bit awkward. You will get a lower time. number. That's the... yes. Uh huh. That was that's what we tend to do up at the festival. We bring up some of those low numbers, particularly because generally we always keep bottle number one for the distillery itself for our, yeah. our own display and records. Um, I've got to admit, on a few selfish basis, I try and get bottle number two. It doesn't make any difference. The stuff's exactly the same in bottle number nine hundred and eighty, but I always try and get bottle number two. And you know. Oh. A certain number as well, didn't you? Mine were just mixed up. All oh, right, because oh, one year you didn't get, it, didn't you? Um, I'm not going to get that. I'm going to from it inside of the bottle. So, Sandy, I think it's been a fantastic. You've done a fantastic tour around the distillery, and it's a great opportunity when it being silent to to do it. It's well, as I say, we've been very fortunate. The weather tonight's been great, um, and. Let's face it, last week up in Speyside was just oh, fantastic. Was, you know, I was out sunbathing, which is not a thought oh. you'd be want to go. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Let's just put everybody off their drums. Um, but, you know, we're, we're extremely fortunate where we are. We've got a wee community here, as I said before, 
one of our distillery operators is 50 today, Eugene. Happy birthday. Yeah, happy birthday, Eugene. You're still sober, that is. You might, you might not remember this. Um, most of the guys here actually stay on site as well. So, again, it makes us into that community, that whole team piece. And that's one of the things that we like to get across to people and the visitors as well. You become part of You become one of our friends. And, yeah. you know, you seen there, Gus, Gus, nice to, to see you, Martin, tonight. We've got Alison mm-hmm. McKee probably there tonight as well, probably Johnny Allen. You know, these people that have been coming time and time and time again to Tamdu, together with all these new new uh, um, new visitors to us as well that we spoke yeah. about there from, you know, right across the world. Absolutely right across the world, which absolutely astounds me. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. In Ireland, I noticed the uh, earlier on had a post of his samples ready for, for dramming with us tonight. Mm-hmm. Um, so raise a glass to you as well. Cheers. And hopefully, and, and, uh, yeah. hopefully we will see you here. Um in 2021 for the whiskey because it's going to be an absolute hooli next year because we've got two years to make up for absolutely right absolutely right um, Sandy and Ian thank you you're very welcome cheers to everybody out there Good cheers day. everybody stay safe stay yeah. healthy please stay safe. keep drinking Tandu and hopefully we'll see you next year whiskey festival 2021 okay cheers. good night Gordon okay. good night thank you very much good night, good night. Mm. Mm. Oh, mm. three. Magnificent. You, you get you get the hit with it. I'll tell you that. You get yeah. that alcohol, that 61 3 on it. Super. Um, but you know what? There's still no burn. It's just so mellow. It's so smooth. Yeah. It's beautiful. 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 Really, really great. Right, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Um, and um, we hope to see you all at. The Spirit of Space Side West Festival next year. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Here's hoping. Welcome. Yeah. All the best. Okay. Good night. Good night.